Have you ever seen an aquarium sealed inside of a jar? Let me show you how I made it. I was cleaning out the garage when I found this old jar tucked in the corner. It made me think, I haven't made a video on my channel in over a year. I don't remember at all what I used this jar for in the past, but it's still full of aqua soil. If you haven't tried aqua soil, it works amazing with plants. It provides all kinds of nutrients that they need. After we clean the jar inside and out, now it's time to add some hardscape. Again, it's been over a year since I used any of these supplies. Luckily, I've been a hoarder and have saved some of the materials we can use. Surely some of these rocks will work. In the backyard, I've been breeding guppies. They've all been moved inside for the winter, but I left some small pieces of driftwood in the barrel that should work. It's starting to warm up here in Texas, so maybe soon I'll get to move them all back outside. Hopefully this will be my next project. With all the materials collected, we can start the hardscape. I am by no means a professional aquascaper. But on this channel, I enjoy showing what all can be done with minimal materials and on a low budget. With prices high at aquarium stores and really everywhere else, it's nice to see a cheaper alternative. The next piece we need is plants. I've had this nano tank for over four years and it's home to a colony of cherry shrimp. It will be the perfect place to steal a few plants. Close to my house is a park with this creek. It is full of aquatic plants and I've been excited to try and grow them in a jar. To me, these plants look like moneywort and Ludwigia rebens. Let me know if I'm right. We'll grab a few stems of both. When obtaining plants from natural waterways, it's normal to find hitchhikers. This is a cluster of snail eggs. They reproduce fast and can quickly take over your tank. But I'm not too worried to add them to the jar. If you want to make something like this too, then go for it. You don't need much. Really, any jar will work. I'll put a link to one like this in the description. Go find a creek or a pond with plants and try growing them. But before you take plants from the wild, you may want to see if it's illegal where you are. You can always buy them online if you have to. With all the plants added, we're almost done. In order to jumpstart the microbiome of our aquarium, I'll take a filter from an old tank and squeeze out all the buildup of gunk. This nasty water is full of beneficial bacteria that will allow our ecosystem to thrive. And with the seal added, we close it up. This is the start of our journey watching this jar develop. So sit back and watch the next six months of growth. After a week, it's time to add some life to the jar. A few cherry shrimp from our colony will make a great addition and they're super fun to watch. After day eight, I went out of town for a while and left the jar for almost two weeks. 
I set the light on a six hour timer and everything seems to be working out great. Day 34 was my first time to open the lid. I did some trimming, added some water, and added copa pots. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps our videos spread to more people. This is a colony of Cyclops copepods. Raising them in a jar like this makes it easy to introduce them to new projects. Here's a close-up to see what they look like. I think it's really interesting going from day one all the way to day 40. It has changed a lot. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to see updates on this jar in the future. If you enjoyed this video, I know you'll like this one next.